Hello, this is Di Kusk, and I'm going to tell you the story I told myself when listening to the stories we tell ourselves by nothing more. Honestly, this is a sleep on it, so um, I think anyone who is seriously interested in this album, <laughs> you know, they already heard it, alright, it's been out for a while, I just got onto it because I do love nothing more, and I might, I might try to buy this, to be honest, I do want to. I, I'm going to try to save up money to actually get this on vinyl because it is a pretty good album. I do enjoy Nothing More self-titled. I found it through, excuse me, I found it through Milk Music when that was a thing. If you don't know what Milk Music was, it was a Samsung app where you had this turn dial and you spun it and it played like these radio stations. And the basic rock one had um Nothing More's Jenny on it and I listened to Jenny and it was pretty good. Uh, you know, it's not my favorite Nothing More song, but I got into them through Jenny and like everyone else did, to be honest. But, um, you know, I got into them through that song, listened to their self-titled, honestly, the Matthew Effect and Friendly Fire stuck out to me at the time when I was first listening to the album. And then I, um, got into, well, now God Went North is my favorite song off of it. The ending track just really hits me to be honest, so that is, like, what I think of their self-titled and how much I love it, so honestly, I, I really had to listen to this album, and why not make content about it? I mean, that, that's what I do. I review music, right? That, that's what I do now. Great. I, I'm not good at it, but I do it. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm gonna do this a little differently, okay? I'm going to tell you what you should really expect when you listen to this, because it is a trip, okay? It's 18 songs. It's pretty long. <laughs> there is some, There are some interludes and, you know, intros, outros, all that fun jazz. Obviously, that's a part of the album, and it's not like a little panic thing where there's just, like, some weird piano and, like, static, okay? It's like an ongoing thing, and it really breaks up the album into segments, and you can really piece together your own story from this album, which is pretty weird, okay? You can basically relate this album to politics and the music industry and all that fun jazz. I related mine to the music industry, so in basic goals. Because, you know, politics, y you can relate this a little. It's it's too easy, all right? It really is too easy to relate this to politics, to be honest. But yeah, this is basically, you know, the stories we tell ourselves. It is just an album about putting a bl metaphorical blindfold on you and ignoring your shit that you have to deal with. That is all this album basically is, and you can make so many things out of that. Um, and with this album, obviously, the new Nothing More style really shows here. The mix between rock and electronic music just fuses so well, and a lot of bands can't really do that. So honestly, Nothing More has got it down to a T, and it's just... It's great, okay? Th their technical stuff is on point for the most part. I'm not really down for Don't Stop, but honestly, with the rest of the album, I do enjoy it. And I do understand Don't Stop's um, relation to the album. It's like when you fully lose yourself, basically, and that's where the point is, where the character, um, how you view it. The whoever wrote the song, um, however you want to, you know, have, however you have your listening experience, basically. Um, this is where you, like, the per like, you know, the story gets a little lost, and you're just like, hey, I don't know what to do, I'm gonna lose all control. And that is what the song basically is, and with a lot of electronic influence, I can see that, okay? There's an unbalance, and so I can't really say, hey, you know, don't, don't stop sucks, you know? It's just not my thing, that I listen to all the time. But then, you know, I might listen to it later, honestly. It is like the pop culture of this album. If you don't know, Pop Culture is by Icon, Icon for Hire, and it's off their, I think they're self-titled. I don't know what that album's called. I haven't listened to it in such a long time, but, you know, that song's really weird and really sticks out, all right? That's not that song the album, okay? Is it necessarily bad? No, it's just not something I generally listen to. But I do understand its purpose in the album, but yeah, that, mm, you know what? I do enjoy the album for the most part and I'm going to tell you the story now that'd be that'd be a good idea <laughs> ambition destruction a dream a world we want to live in a goal this goal is identified here but these questions you know they, they exist all right um is a sacrifice worth it would drowning myself in meaningless things be easier can I put aside my own ego? Can I look in the mirror? Can I grow? Transform. Convict. Divide. Oz are met here. 
There are people who are in things for the money, and there are some that aren't. The ones who aren't get lost in the schemes of the ones who only care about the physical world acting as energy vampires to the ones who aren't. Eventually, the ambition gets caught in these schemes of the divide, losing themselves, encouraging others to stray away from the negativity while drowning in it themselves. Being haunted by their own shadow, they cannot recognize anymore. React. Respond. Things didn't turn the way as planned, causing a break. But was it worth it? The care will still remain and do not leave the character. Or the person who wrote this in the first place. A sense of purpose is lost. And going back and fighting what held them back may fill their void alone together. The ambition's original beliefs form back together. And the passion comes back. You know, they finally find themselves again after losing themselves. A connection to the original message is formed and a reborn passion to change things for the better has revived. Accept. Disconnect. The connect fully happens, you know, what the ambition truly wants with the rest of the album. The connect happens. Their wants, needs, and goals finally fit together in this puzzle called life, I guess. A confidence is found to face all odds against them, no matter how dark the path is. Nothing can be a distraction anymore. End. Begin. There is a transition to the end of the journey. Everything has been completed, and the journey has ended, and there may be another one starting. Fade in, fade out. The character faces death, and by that I mean the character of the album, obviously, um... By remembering what his father told him. Did he follow his father's advice? Did he make a good impact on the world in any on any scale? Or will he just fade out with nothing that anyone would remember him by? Who knows? So yeah, that's how I absorbed the content of this album. It is a very deep album for sure, and it is 18 tracks. It is... I don't know, man. I guess it's the suburbs of rock music. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know how else to put it. But anyways, I really did enjoy this album. The technical stuff was on point, but I think we all know about the technical stuff at this point. Okay, we all know what Nothing More is capable of. So I guess I just really want to um, bring up a question. What did you take out of this album if you have listened to it? This is what I took out of this album. This is a story I told myself. This is the blindfold I put on myself right before I listened to this. And, you know, I want to know, what blindfold did you put on when you heard stor the stories we tell ourselves by nothing more? Anyways, peace out. Hug a tree. Shout out to Fire Ram. Shout out to Idiot Comedy. Uh, new videos hopefully soon.